Hi, my name is Ale, and in this tutorial I will be showing you how to build your first iOS app using SwiftUI. We're going to build an app like this one, where you'll be able to add a to-do and then delete it once it's done. We're going to start by creating a new Xcode project. You should select Single View App, give your project a name, I'm going to name it To-Dos. And make sure that Swift is selected as the language and Swift UI is selected as the user interface. We're going to be writing the code for our app in the content view.swift file. So go ahead and navigate there. We're first going to start by defining two different variables that will help us keep track of the state in our app. First, we're going to define the a variable to keep track of the current to-do that is being added to the list. So we're going to do that by typing in at state private var new to-do equals and empty string. Now, we're also going to need to add a variable to keep track of the list of to-dos. But before we define this variable, we're going to define our own structure that will wrap a to-do element. So, we're going to type struct to-do item. And we have to make sure that we're able to identify one item from another. So, we're going to conform to the identifiable protocol. And this requires that we provide an ID, so we can do lit ID equals UU ID. And we're going to store the actual to do in a string. So lit to do of type string. Now we can define our list of to dos by doing at state private var all to dos which will be of type list of to do item and will start out as an empty list now we're going to start building the user interface for our app so first we're going to embed the content of our ui in a navigation view so we can get rid of this text and we can add a navigation view. Inside our navigation view we're going to have a vertical stack. So let's type vStack. Inside our stack we're going to have a text field and a button that you will use to type a new to-do and press it when you want to add it to the list. And then we're going to have a list view to show all of the to-dos in your list. So let's first start by adding the list and we can do this by using a list. Inside our list we're going to use what's called a for each and for each of our to-dos in our all to-dos list. we're going to add a text. So text and the text inside this element will just be the items to do. So let's run our app to see how it will look. Since our all to do's list is starting out empty, we should see an empty list. Cool, so as you can see when our app launches, we can see a list, but right now it's empty because we haven't added any to-do to our list of to-dos. So let's go ahead and add a text field and a button to add to-dos to our list. And let's also add a title to our navigation bar so that we know what the name of our app is. Or in this case, we're going to put a string that says to-dos. So let's go back to Xcode and we're first going to start by adding the title to our navigation bar. 
And to do that, we can use the navigation bar title modifier. So let's add that just below our VStack navigation bar title. And I'm going to add the to do's title. Now let's add the text field where you'll be able to type a new to do. And for that, we can just use a text field. As you can see, the initializer needs a title. I'm just going to type add to do. And you know, it also needs a text that is provided as a binding of a string. And we already defined a new to do string. And to provide it as a binding, we use the dollar sign. We're going to embed this text field in a horizontal stack so that we can add the button to its right. So you can press the command key on your keyboard, then click on text field and select embed in H stack. Now we're going to add some styling to our text field so that it has uh, rounded borders. So we can use the text field style modifier and we're going to add rounded border text field style. We're also going to add some padding around our horizontal stack. And now let's go ahead and add the button that you will be able to press to add the to do to your list. So for this, we're going to create a button. And for now, we can just leave the action field empty. We'll implement the action in a second. Let's add the content of the button and that's going to be a image. We're going to use the system images and this one is called plus. Now we're going to add some padding before our button. So that's going to be some spacing between the text field and the actual plus button. So we can do that by using padding and we're going to add it to the leading side with a value of 5. Great. So now we have our button and what we need to do is implement the action so that our all to do's list is updated. So what do we need to do here? First, we need to take the string that's in the text field and once we have it, we're going to create a new to do item and add it to our list. We have to make sure that this string is not an empty string and we can do that by typing the following guard not self dot new to do dot is empty else return. So if our string is empty, we don't want anything to happen when the button is pressed. But if it's not empty, then what we can do is add the new item to our all to do's list. So we can do self dot all to do's dot append and we create here a new to do item to do item where the to do is just the string in new to do. So self dot new to do. And now we can just reset the new to do string so that our text field is uh, empty again. So we can do self dot new to do equals and empty string. Perfect. So let's go ahead and run our app. And right now, if we type uh, to do and press the plus button, we should see the to do that we typed in our list. Great, so let's add a to do. For example, learn Swift UI. You can press the plus button. Maybe follow at highlight.apps on Instagram. Perfect, as you can see, we can see our to dos on our list. Now, there's one small problem. If we kill the app 
and then open it again, we will, we will not see the to-dos in our list. And that's because right now we're not saving the to-do items in a database anywhere. So the app doesn't know um, that you had previously created to-dos to add to our list. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called user defaults to store our to-dos so that we can load them from the database when the user opens the app and save them whenever a, the user adds a new element to the list. So now we're going to use user defaults to store our to-dos. User defaults is a database that you can use to save information in um, iOS or uh, Mac devices. And user defaults follows a key value structure. So basically, if you want to store a given value, you need to provide a key um, that will be used to store and to also retrieve the value from the database. So let's first define um, the key that we will use to store our list of to-dos. And we can just type private lit to-dos key equals a string, and this can just be to-dos key. Now for iOS to understand that our to-do item can be stored in user defaults, it needs to conform to a protocol called Codable. And what this will tell iOS is that our to-do item can be encoded and decoded to be stored in user defaults. So this is all we need to add for, for this. Now we're going to define a function that will be used to save our items whenever the button is tapped. So let's define a function here and we can call it save to do's. Now here is where we're going to use user defaults for the first time. And what we want to do is encode our list of all to do's and save it to user defaults using the to do key. So let's type user defaults dot standard dot set. And for the value is, uh, for the value we're gonna provide our encoded list. And for the key we're gonna use to do key. So let's add the key first, to do key. Now, for the value, we're first going to try and encode our to-dos list by using a property list encoder. So we can type try question mark property list encoder dot encode. And here we want to encode uh, self dot all to-dos. So now that we have our function to save our to-dos, what we need to do is call it inside the action of our button so that when the to-do is added to the list, the list is also saved to user defaults. So we can do self.save to-dos. Great, so now that we're saving our to-dos whenever a new item is added to the list, we're also going to add a new function to load these to-dos from the database when the app is open. To do this, we're going to type private func load to-dos. And in this, in this function, we're going to do the opposite of what we're doing in the save to-dos. So instead of writing our list to user defaults, we're going to read it from user defaults. Now, when we read from user defaults any data that we had previously encoded, the type of these um, value is going to be of type data. Once we get the data, we can decode it to be of type list of to-do items. So first, let's, let's try to get this data. And we can do if let to-dos data equal to user defaults dot standard dot value. And for key, it's the self um, dot to do key, or you can also just type to do key as data. So we're, if we're able to get the data, then now what we can do is decode it. And for this, we're going to use a property list decoder. So what we can do is if let to do list be equals to try 
property list decoder dot decode and we're going to decode the to do's data now what type of value is this this is a list or an array that holds to do items and we need to add here the self so if we're able to decode the data into a list of to do items then all we have to do is assign it to the all to do's variable that we showed to the user in the UI. So here we type self dot all to do's equals to do's list. Now we're going to use this function whenever our app is open. And to do that, we can use the onAppear function. So we're going to add that just below our navigation view. On appear, perform load to do's. So let's go ahead and run our app to verify that our database is working. So let's type a to do learn. Swift UI, add it to our list, uh, maybe by pizza, add it to our list. Now let's go ahead and kill the app and when we open it again we should see the items in our list. Great. So now that we're able to save these to-do items to our database, let's go ahead and add one more function so that we're able to delete items from our list whenever we're finished with them. So let's go back to Xcode. And to be able to delete an item, we have to use the onDelete function on our for each. So let's add onDelete, and as you can see, we have to provide a function that takes an index set. So let's actually define that function. I'm gonna call it um, delete to do. So private func delete to do. And our function takes in an index set, which we will call offsets. So let's type at offsets index it and now what we have to do here is remove the element from our all to do's list in the provided offset so let's do self dot all to do's dot remove at offsets offsets and once we've removed the item from our list, we should save our database again so that it's uh, synced with whatever the user is seeing on the app. So we can call save to do's. And finally, what we need to do is call our delete to do function inside the on delete modifier. So here we can do delete to do. Great, so let's run the app and verify that we're able to delete items. Cool, so let's try and delete Learn Swift UI. And if we kill the app and open it again, you can see that our list is correctly synced. Perfect. So that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to build your first iOS app Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting more videos very soon. Thank you for watching.